everyone. Welcome to Yamen's Take on Things. Today on the Pyjama Party, we have a very special guest. Her name is Blessing, and she's a banker and a charity enthusiast. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, Blessing. Hi. <laughs> okay, so today we're going to be talking about charity and the art of giving. And before we go into it proper, just like you to tell us what, what do you think charity is? What does charity mean to you? Okay, so hi everyone, charity. Charity is a very, very big thing for me. Charity means giving. Charity means, um, I think the actual word here is love. Having them um, showing compassion for others and um, meeting their needs or doing the best you can to make someone else get better. Basically for me, that's what charity is about. Okay, so coming from that, is the other different forms of charity like what are the different forms of charity that you have experienced okay so um i've experienced charity on different levels you have the people that are able to i know of someone that is able to raise funds and get food to large amounts of people at once weekly so um i know of someone who sends foods to the uh, internet displaced people that costs millions and millions of naira. There's charity on that level. And there's charity on the level of um, you have someone who needs to pay his fees. Maybe it's just 10,000 naira. And basically, maybe that's all you have. Mm. Or that's kind of like a stretch. And you go ahead and meet that need. It's charity. You have, um, it can be as little as you're going down the road and you meet some elderly people who are unable to lift their baggage and you decide to do it for them up to their doorstep before going to your own place. That's charity. You could just be giving someone a lift from one place to another, maybe even if it's out of your way. The basic thing is love, and being able to show love to someone else, even if sometimes it's inconveniencing to you. I think that's what it's about. Okay, so um, I've heard people say, okay, if somebody doesn't ask me directly or if it's somebody that can do something for themselves and they're not pulling their own weight, then why should I have to give them anything? So the question I have is, are there certain people who are worthy of charity or should you care whether or not you can help themselves if you want to do it? Yeah, that's, that's, that's something that we usually encounter. But um, if you want to help somebody, and you know you can, I think you can. I think you should go ahead and help. Sometimes helping the person may not really be meeting the need he's asking for. It may just be setting up, setting the person in such a way that he can meet that need for himself. So it's not really about, oh, I'm giving you something. So for example, like I'm in Ibadan, and then um, if you walk the streets of Ibadan, there are lots and lots and lots of beggars from Almajiri children to um, old women and all that. I'm I, at the level I am, I'm not able to meet those needs. And even if the children come crying to me, like I, I wouldn't be able to give you every day. But if I really, really, really wanted to help and if I had the resources, I would prefer setting them, um, creating homes, like homeless shelters and, and, and reskilling them so that they can fend for themselves. For me, if anybody wants to help those people on the streets, that's, that's what it's about. It's not really about giving them money every day or food every day. It's, mm -hmm. Okay, so it actually stems from the fact that, like you said, those children who come running to you or the women on the sides of the streets, um, people have this theory that they are not actually working for themselves. They're actually working for a bigger boss somewhere. So I've heard of stories where they'll say, okay, you know what, let me try and help you. Let me take your children to school. And they would say no, they would refuse, they would run away and things like that. So what do you think is the cause of that? And how can we solve that particular problem? Because sometimes you want to help, but these people are not even willing to help. They actually want to beg. Yeah, yeah. There's that, yeah. And of course, I've gotten to know that within, um, among beggars, there's a structure and organization. So usually yeah. the person you are giving money to at that point is remitting to someone else. So there's that. I think that's in place, among other things, to help themselves, even though someone may be trying to gain from it more than every other person. You can't, if you're trying to help in that kind of situation, you might actually meet some people who will be willing to take you up on that offer. But if they are not willing to, you can't help someone. You can only help to the extent that they are ready to take in your help. Mm -hmm. So if you can, please keep giving them tokens and stuff. But if someone is really ready to 
get out of that level, which is really what they need, then by all means, send them to school, set them up, and all of that. Okay. I like what you said about how charity, you can only help to the extent to which they want to be helped. So <laughs> you can only do your best and offer, and if not, you just have to move on and <laughs> find your way. Um, so the next question is actually, um, I've also heard people, friends that will say, oh, well, by the time I start receiving 200,000 naira a month, I would start doing charity or by the time I start receiving this. So do I have to be rich to give? Like I said, charity is love. It, it, I don't, it doesn't always cost a lot to show love to the person beside you. So, and um, uh, the idea is just that you are always in a better place than someone else. So there's always someone that you can help. It doesn't have to be on such a large scale. So you're not earning that much or you're not even earning at all. You can give your time. Mm. Okay, like going to orphanage children's homes, I got to realize that sometimes it's not even really about the food stuff we're packing. Like there was a time I went to an orphanage home and we packed food stuff in my mind. We've really come to give. And we got there and they packed the food stuff and took it to a stop. They were going to sell those things to get money for what they really needed in that home. But the fact was we spent about two hours with them and when we were going home, the head of the orphanage came to really, really thank us for coming to play with the children. Mm. So it seems to me that apart from the food stuff, the value that we gave was our time. Yeah. So it's not really about um, how much you can give or not give. It's just being able to give the best you can at the level you are in. And as you keep getting better, you keep going with the mindset of I always have to help someone else, you know, as your level in increases. Okay, that's very insightful. Um, the next question is, okay, so I want to give now. Where do I start from? Where do I look to? How do I go about it? Okay, so there, there are in different ways. Um, like for myself, how I started was, um, it's going to sound a bit funny and cheesy, but um, when I was in school, back then in school, I stayed, I stayed with a friend. We were in hostels together. And there was this time of the term in university. There was this period where everybody was always broke. Like, we all knew. So once that period is like, do you have you to know? Have you to know? We, we know all that. We get. So we're always broke. And if anybody could do anything for us that period, just come and take us out of our stuff and you've done a lot. So there was this period where the, the, the hostel I stayed, there was this, there, sometimes you have water issues. So we have to come, I have to come all the way downstairs to fetch water and then come upstairs to fill my drum. It's very, very hectic. So this evening I was fetching water for myself. When I was done, I took my bouquet and started fetching water for my next door neighbor. Mm. The way she thanked me. The way she thanked me, it was like I gave her food because we're all broke <laughs> together. <laughs> you know, and she really, 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 really appreciated it. At that point, was, I was as hungry as she was. There was nothing mm. I could do and all that so you get so it's not really um you could start at that level now when i was done with school i got a job okay i started um serving so at that time i started earning something it still wasn't a lot it was basically like say 10 to twenty thousand. by the time i removed my transport fare remove the money is gone so there was that but i started giving my time i started preparing students for um ssc exam i served in a community where education was not a priority mm. like they were majorly farmers they sending their children to the farm to get food so that they can sell and get money so that was the that was so i said but i saw some students that were really bright it's just that their, their minds were not focused on the education thing so i gave my energy towards that i started teaching coaching mentoring Mm. And I think by the time I was done, I knew that I knew that my effort was really appreciated because the kids all of a sudden, I started seeing kids that were not really interested in studying. They would have studied and be like, please, my your next question. <laughs> like you get, and as at that time, like I taught, I taught biology in this particular private secondary school. The kids that were in SS3, some of them wanting to read medicine, they mm. had not had a biology teacher the previous year. So I was just coming and I was like, Okay, what do you want to read medicine? Okay, what is this? Simple biology questions they couldn't answer. And they were really bothered. By the time I was done with them, these people were, no, they were, they were ready you mm. know, to take, take on those exams. And I was proud of that. At that level, that's all I could do. I left there and I'm working now in a bank. I'm obviously earning more. And I started coming in contact with, um, like, say, people that sweep the compound where I stay, 
the washermen, employed, the gatesmen, I may not be able to meet all their needs. So I just speak the need of interest. I'm a big fan of education and I started sponsoring to get one or two people and myself, I got friends together, my best friend, some other friends, we all came together and I can say like for the past three years, we've been sending at least eight children to school on scholarship. So, but you can see the trend where I'm coming from. I didn't just start out like, oh, I have 10,000, let me start giving. No, it starts from whatever level you are. And the, the, the more you do it, the better you get at it. And your, your focus, your mind will always be on the fact that you need to help someone out there. So yeah. basically that's it. Okay, that's wonderful. Um, just before I go into your like your different charities that you volunteer and you support, I would like you to ask, um, in Nigeria, obviously, the culture of charity is not, um, how do I say, it's not very strong. Like, yes, there are individuals just like you who are trying to do as much as they can, and there are NGOs who have been trying. But the government as a whole has not really, I would say, has not really put in effort in trying to um, encourage people to, to give. Um, in countries like the UK, Canada, they have this um, uh, tax de deductible donations that you can do through church or whatever. So basically, they're telling people, if you donate, you wouldn't have to pay this as tax when the time comes. Mm -hmm. That really helps people to want to say, okay, what, what am I really losing, right? But in Nigeria, it doesn't work that way. So my question mm -hmm. is, yes, we might not really do anything directly to the government because who are we but <laughs> i want to say is there anything we can do to sensitize people like now you've come on this show and hopefully people would watch this show so is there anything else that we can do to just sensitize people and say you know what it is good to give right what like first of all the number one is what can we do to sensitize people more and more and the second thing is can you just name about three or four benefits of charity like you as a giver, what you gain. Because most times people don't want to do anything if they don't have something to gain. It's not a good just, just, I am telling us what are some of the things that you gain if you give to charity. Okay, so to your first question, what more can we do to sensitize people? Um, the truth is that for me, actually, I didn't even know charities, serious charities existed mm. until, say, last year. Yeah, so... I think um, NGOs that are working out there, they should put their content out, get more organized, let us know what you are doing and how we can help. You get, if we have more and more of that, because different NGOs work in different areas, you have NGOs working in education, you have NGOs working in uh, reskilling, financing, and all of that. So the more of the information you get out there through um, the internet, social media, even word of mouth, the more people can get to know about it. So um, what are the benefits? First of all, myself as a Christian, the benefit for me is that I get to do what um, God will have me do, which is giving. So God gave his son. I've gotten something free. What can I do to help someone else? For me, that's, my, that's the, um, the ultimate benefit. But apart from that, there's this joy that comes when you've seen that you've been able to do something from someone and you're like, like the kids that would pay school fees, one of them graduated. And I felt this, like, oh, look how we did. Mm. Yeah, like he's graduated and he can go now and have a different life than where he was going. So there's that. Then thirdly, especially in um, African countries, actually, the more active, when you're actively volunteering in organized NGOs, it actually helps us because we get to put it as part of our um part of our interest when we're applying for scholarships. That's actually one very um, one very key thing that I think a lot of people don't know. When you're applying for schools and scholarships abroad, things like volunteering actually helps our CVs as Africans. That's the third one. Then the fourth one, uh, I think I'm out of benefits. <laughs> <laughs> Those are actually a lot of benefits and they are like <laughs> If you're watching, please go and give to charity. <laughs> it's all good and no bad. <laughs> um, so just before we go, can you just tell us more about some of the charities that you support and how people can reach out to you if they wanted to like join your charities or at least ask more questions about the charities that you support? 
Okay, so um, I, I volunteer at um, two, three charities. My favorite charity is Church on the Street. I like Church on the Street because um, their target, their focus area is something I love so much. They reach out to kids specifically, kids on the streets and families. So you have some people that are homeless. They just they just go and shoot during the day begging and then during the night sleep wherever they want. They have kids also, like when you talk of the poor people in society, their children cannot go to school. So Church on the Street targets those families, gets food to them, gets sponsorship organized for them, and then goes around from school to school training and empowering girls. So for me, that's like, that's, that's parity for me. So I love them so much. They're very organized. They have uh, an active website. They are, they, they are very accountable with funds that gets to them. So for me, it's a yes, yes with them. So that's why they're my favorite charity. The second charity I volunteer at is um, Humanitarian Duties, and that's the T-shirt I'm wearing right now. They are also big on education. So um, earlier this year, we, together we organized this um, IT, um, IT seminar for secondary school children and then we got about 20 students actually that was in february from public schools i was there teaching them ms word computer science and all of that and you'd be surprised that an ss1 student in nigeria does not know what a laptop is doesn't know what a laptop looks like he doesn't know the parts of a computer he cannot identify a monitor and a mouse like I was standing there asking, like, you guys, you've seen a desktop before, right? And they were like, desktop, no. And I was like, wow. wow. <laughs> it's it was it, it brought to the fore that oh okay, no matter how not so privileged I think I am, I'm very privileged <laughs> where I'm standing from. You get so by the time we're done, you need to see students like typing on MSO like bosses, like I was, I was really proud, you get, and it, it was really fun for me. And so Humanitarian Duties does that. They also tried to, like, during this COVID, they got funds together to deliver to poor families that were struggling, foodstuff and everything, and got it to them. So those are two things they did. In. They told them NGO I volunteered is Revamp Africa. Hmm. It's more like a national NGO. They are really big. They go from public school to public school teaching on leadership, morals, and financial literacy. And it's, it's, it's loads of fun. It's so much fun. It's so much fun. Like, you can't, you can't imagine, you know, standing there and it's like talking, talking to my SS1 self, you know, mm-hmm. this is what you ought to do. This is where you should be wary of. I think you should emphasize on this. And I'm like, you know, I, I wish I had more of that growing up actually. I had a few of them, but I wish I had more of that. I might have been doing more at this stage. But talking to those kids, you know, kids that come from poor backgrounds, there's a high tendency they're going to drop out from school. There's a high tendency that they're going to give, and I know what you're going through, and I think you should do this. It has a way of like, giving them a mind shift that, oh, okay, so I can still succeed. I just need to, you know, keep going, keep going with my education, or watch out for some bad um, vices, and I'll be okay. I'm, I'm happy to do that. So those are three ranges of volunteers. You can Google them, Church on the Streets, um, Revamp Africa, and Humanitarian Duties. You can find them on Google. They take volunteers, they take donations, and all of that. Okay, that's very, very wonderful. Thank you so much, Blessing, for uh, coming on the show. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to use this platform to actually get more people to volunteer and give to charity. So thank you so much. I hope we have more conversations in the future. And um, yeah, guys, you heard from Blessing and you know what to do now. So I don't want to hear, I don't know where to start. Oh, my income is too small. All those things are just excuses. You can do what you can. Like Blessing said, even from your immediate environment, as little as helping somebody fetch water. And that's very inspiring. So thank you so much. And don't forget to leave your comments in the comment section. If you have any questions for Blessing, just um, leave them in the comment section and she would answer. And um, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, like this video. And I'll see you in the next uh, episode. Bye, blessing. Bye. (laughs) Bye.